So the Rise of the Beast Studio Series line is reaching its conclusion. We only have very few characters left that they could possibly make, but I have the two latest deluxes here. I have Wheeljack and I have Scorponok. Both of these have mainline alternatives as, as well, and I will be comparing those. And honestly, it's kind of a case of, do you really need the Studio Series if you have the mainline already? I don't know. It's, it's kind of up in the air. I do like both of these. But I definitely have to say, if this is, you know, close to the end of the Rise of the Beast Studio Series line, and if this is, like, the last hurrah, it's ending on more of a whimper than a bang. I'm not super impressed with either of these. They're not they're not going to be desk figures for very long, let me just put it that way. Uh, let's actually talk about Scorponok first, because he's the first one that I opened up, and the first one I found. Uh, I actually found both of these in stores. I decided, you know, I don't want to just pre-order these and get them in the mail. I want to actually wait to find them in stores, and I did. I found Scorponok here at a Target, and I found Wheeljack, surprisingly, at a Walmart. So Scorponok, uh, as you can see, this is his robot mode, and I actually think he looks cooler in the robot mode than the vehicle mode. Well, I say vehicle mode. It's a beast mode. <laughs> it's, it's habit to always call it a vehicle mode. Uh, but I really do love, like, the creepy look of this version of Scorponok. I love the colors too. I think the colors look really nice. I think the head looks very cool. The head really reminds me of like Michael Bay Megatron a little bit. I don't know, just something about it. It really has like some Bayformer look to it and I, I enjoy that. Uh, I do have him with the tail still attached in the beast mode part. I just think that looks the nicest. But the intention is to take it off and there is a plug uh, on the inside of the arm. It's such a bad spot, honestly and you plug it in on the inside of the arm, and it's forever curled inwards. So to have a very similar pose, it's just not very good looking. It's always like, it looks good if like, he's almost curling it like, you know, Age of Extinction Scorn, but that's pretty much it. It just doesn't look any good handheld, and it's got a clip. Both of these figures have a lot of these clips that just always come off, <laughs> and it's so frustrating. Both of them have that, so if you ever find these guys used someday, look out for so many parts, just not on them anymore. Uh, but yeah, I really don't like how the tail attaches. It's not bad, but it's whatever. The tolerances on this guy are really weird, because his, his waist connects, but it doesn't really stay in too well. His thighs, or his hips, I should say, are super tight, and his legs are just kind of tiny, and the fact that his legs are super tight ball joints, these are like the tightest ball joints I've ever seen on a transformer like right at the box they are so tight they're stupid tight uh, but overall it's it's not bad he is kind of small he's a small little deluxe boy but he serves his purpose he does have the the scorpion legs in the back you can kind of have those a little bit more flared out if you want I'll probably have them like that on the shelf so it takes up a little bit less space I actually think I'm gonna display this guy in the robot mode I just like the robot mode a lot. <clears throat> and we do have various other alternatives for Scorponok. I do I do not have the uh, <clears throat> like the Beast Alliance uh, Scourge with the Scorponok armor, but I do have the mainline Scorponok, and I really like this guy a lot. And I kind of like it a little bit more than this. I don't know, I just like the look of it a lot. One thing I love is the head. Uh, in my review I did of this Scorponok back when it came out, someone pointed out that it's actually based on the Revenge of the Fallen Dead End head. And I was like, oh yeah, it is. Why is that? And uh, they pointed out that someone made like a movie verse like G1 Scorponok custom and they used this head for it. And I guess whoever designed this figure saw that custom as inspiration and that's why this figure looks like this figure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty dead on. Like, that, the faces are very, very similar. Uh, so, yeah, very, very cool. Uh, I really just... I like the integration of the scorpion tail on this one a lot more. It actually looks like an actual weapon. I just like that more. I like the rough textures, and I like the greens. I love, like, the purpley colors on this one, though. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, it's, I don't know, I just kind of prefer this. And we do have his little Beast Alliance Target Master guy that this one came with. So we can actually have a little group of Scorponox from the Rise of the Beast line. Uh, quickly transforming this one. This one's transformation is, like, super duper quick. Like, this is just no time at all. It's a very basic figure, but <laughs> it, it gets the job done, you know? It's, oh, it's Scorponox. 
And for me, you know, whenever I get around to having a nicer display for Rise of the Beast than what I have now, um, I think it's going to be really cool being able to have uh, several different Scorpinox on the display. Uh, but this one, the Scorpio mode, is very cool to me anyway. Very simple transformation, really enjoy it. This transformation on this one, uh, first going over the articulation, I always get ahead of myself. I always get ahead of myself, but don't worry. Let's do articulation first. Uh, his neck is on like a hinge for transformation, and then it's on a ball joint. He has hinges and ball joints at the shoulders. Actually, it's just a ball joint, and it's kind of, you know, gets in the way a little bit. Very odd how the shoulders work, by the way. Uh, he's got biceps, double jointed elbows, ball joints at the hands, nothing at the waist, ball joint, the tightest ball joint of all time. Also a very tight thigh swivel. I have no idea why these tolerances are so tight. I feel like he's going to break. Uh, knees, and he has ball jointed ankles. So that's his articulation. Okay, let's transform him. Hooray. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his tolerances are so weird, and he just has some very odd decisions, but it's still a very cool, fun figure in my opinion. Uh, one thing I find very fascinating is how the front claws are formed. You may be looking at this like, what is going on? And honestly, I was that way too, and I was trying to figure this out. As you can see, the arms kind of collapse in on themselves and form the claws. Like, the hands wrap around the shoulder pads, and that's the front claws. And they do the job, but they don't really have a lot of articulation. They can pretty much just, you know, move on a horizontal axis they have no vertical movement and that's pretty disappointing but anyways we let's let's finish this uh the legs are just going to move down and get those more properly positioned once it's all said and done uh these legs collapse these in and then these do this and <laughs> there's a little spot right there where the leg tabs into the butt that kind of gets those in their proper position so there's that. And then we're almost done, pretty much. We'll take this panel, and once all that's fully collapsed, yeah, it didn't go in all the way, then we'll close up the chest again, make sure all the legs are properly aligned. And that's pretty much the transformation on the Studio Series one. And it looks nice. I do like this scorpion mode, but it just looks a little awkward to me. I think the claws are very awkward. I see what they're going with. But I don't know, I just, I'm not feeling it as much. I do like the little, like, saw blade things inside. kind of reminds me of, you know, uh, ah, jeez. Why am I blanking? It's literally the same guy. <laughs> 2007 Scorpnock. It reminds me of his claws. Oh my gosh, I swear. I just can't talk. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad, but I don't know. It's not about it. I just prefer this one. I don't know. I don't know. They're both nice. If you want to have, like, a Scorponok army for your Rise of the Beast collection, like you can see, we have several different Scorponoks that you can use for your uh, final battle display. I think it would look really cool. I enjoy it. It's nice. It's Scorponok. Uh, Wheeljack, on the other hand, I don't know about this one uh, because I really like the mainline Wheeljack for what it is. And this one just feels like the same thing, just different and in some ways better and in other ways not. I don't know. It's It's kind of an odd one. Uh, so, yeah, it's, you know, Studio Series Deluxe Wheeljack, and I just, again, I don't really know how I feel about it. Uh, let me just bring in the mainline one, because I just feel like this needs to happen immediately. Uh, so, you can see the mainline one, the colors are a little bit more caramely, a little bit more gold, and I feel like this is more accurate, but this looks nicer. Obviously, this one has a movie-accurate vehicle mode. Obviously. It's an actual Volkswagen. Uh, but I do have to say, like, I feel like it does a few things that kind of overcomplicate things, and this one just kind of does them simpler. I don't know. I don't know. They're both not perfect. They both have their plethora of problems. Neither of these figures are perfect. <laughs> Honestly, neither of them. Uh, I do have to say, though, the head on the mainline one is a lot better, uh, because actually, oh my gosh, yep, there we go, that's... That's nice. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> nice little flop me do going on. Does this... I don't remember. Does this guy even tab together? Yeah, there we go. I don't even know what happened there. Uh, but, yeah, the head on this one, if it will stay together, actually has, like, a clear visor for the glasses. And you can still see the eyes through it. And has a little bit more silver paint going, along, going on along the sides. But this one, there is no clear 
over the glasses. It's just glasses. And the paint just kind of stops on the side of the face. I do have to say the sculpt is probably nicer on the Studio Series, but I don't know, man. I feel like that just looks nicer. It's got light piping, and it really actually works, and you can see the eyes through the glasses. And it actually has an, a painted Autobot symbol on the head, too, which is very nice. I don't know. I just... I just... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, with how I've collected Rise of the Beasts, I have both mainline and Studio Series versions of all of the Maximals and all of the Autobots. So I was like, I might as well get the Studio Series Wheeljack so I can have, like, separate displays of, like, here's the mainline, here's the Studio Series, you know? Uh, but I just... I don't know, man. This one's nice. I just find it so odd that this toy line made two deluxes of, like, the same guy. And I feel like they just could have combined efforts and just made one nice toy. I do have to say I like the positioning of the door wings a lot more on the Studio Series. They feel a lot more accurate. But you're looking at the insides of the doors. And the insides of the doors are painted uh, clear plastic. So they just look dark. You don't actually have any visual of what they're supposed to be. And that's just kind of odd looking. Even though, to be fair, these ones are kind of like really tiny and hidden along the side and you can't really see them too well. But again, it's facing the right way, so kind of a give and take. The arms are very simplistic on the main line. But look on the Studio Series, it has an extra panel! Whoa! There's a panel now! But other than that, it's pretty much the same amount of complexity. <laughs> uh, both of them have the suspenders. Uh, this one, for whatever reason, like, the suspenders can move just ever so slightly, but don't really know what kind of purpose it serves. The legs feel very awkward on the Studio Series, because they have a swivel down here, but then they also have a thigh swivel still. I don't know, just something about it. Like, trying to move that swivel with the knee, it just feels odd to me. I don't know, like, you can just kind of see, like, this chicken movement going on. And that's a part of the transformation, but it just makes moving the leg very awkward. It makes posing this guy very awkward. Uh, this one, though, I feel like the legs are far more chonkier and solid. And I liked the ankle articulation a lot more, too, because it actually had some forward. A little bit of tilt, but it had a lot of down, too. These ankles, like, you do get forward, but you don't really get too much back for transformation. And the tilt, like, it, it's there, but again, you just have to work with the awkward legs. And it almost looks broken. It's not about it, man. I don't know. This guy just doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> I like it. I do. Don't get me wrong. But I just, I don't know, man. I feel like once I'm done with this video, I'm just going to put him on the shelf and be done with it. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Uh, so, yeah, his articulation, he's got a ball joint at the head. Uh, he has hinges for transformation, but he also has ball joints at the shoulders. As well as at the biceps that are very, very tight. Um, or at least very big and mushroomy. And these have, like, come off on me in the past. Uh, tight kind of elbows. These guys are just so tight. This guy's not nearly as tight as Scorponok, but still he's tight. Uh, he does technically have rotating uh, door wings, too. That's more so for transformation. Uh, he does have a waist swivel. He does have ball joints at the legs. The very awkward thigh swivel, and then the even more awkward lower knee swivel, and then the weird doubly knee thing, and I already went over the ankles. So yeah, it's kind of odd. His accessory, he has... I swear I've seen this gun before. I don't remember whose gun this is, but this is like a repurposed gun. I cannot recall whose gun this is, but I swear this is not an original gun for him. And it's not accurate to the movie either. He's supposed to have like hand cannons. So I've, I do not remember whose gun this is, but I feel like so strongly this is just used from somebody else. I, I looked at my shelf for a little bit trying to pinpoint it. I couldn't find it fast enough, so I wasn't stressing. But please comment, whose gun is this? Because I swear this is a re repurposed gun. I swear it is. I've seen it before. Uh, but, yeah, it's clear plastic, too, which is very odd. Super accurate movie detail. Clear guns. All right. Let's transform the uh, mainline one first. To kind of, I've already reviewed this guy, but just to kind of get a feel for the differences. Um, I mean, obviously, you can see this guy just starts falling apart immediately. Uh, it, both of these have very awkward transformations, I have to say. Like, both of them make me feel, like, uncomfortable trying to actually, like, manipulate the plastic and get things actually going where they need to go. And especially the doors on both of them. On both of these figures, the doors just... I feel like I'm going to break them. I'm being dead serious. I feel like I'm going to break the doors 
on both of these. Because they, like, just have to shift in ways that I don't feel comfortable shifting them. Uh, let's get that in. Yeah, it's... I, I, I feel like the transformation on the main line is a little nicer from what I remember. But I am kind of still doing this from memory. But I do have to say, like, it's not a movie-accurate alt mode. So that's going to be a big detractor for a lot of people. I know for me, I'm not super worried about alt modes. Like, I like Transformers to, that transform, obviously. I do collect Transformers that don't transform as well from time to time. But if I ever had, like, the choice of will you purchase a Transformer that transforms or one that doesn't, I will always go for one that does. Uh, but still, like, this transformation I just feel like works better. And even though it's not a more movie-accurate vehicle, it's just more successful as a Transformers toy. And I just feel more satisfaction completing this and doing this. It's less painily and more like actual substance of motion. And I enjoy it. Uh, we are reaching... Oh, yeah. You have to have those out. That's one step I always forget. You have to have the suspenders out because otherwise they're going to get in the way. Uh, we are pretty much reaching the end of this. And it's pretty much been a stress-free experience. I haven't really felt any stress from it. Because if you know me, how I transform Transformers, I don't like, oh, let me look at the instructions. Okay, I did that step. Okay, no, I just, I go for it. It doesn't matter the order of operations. I just go for it. And going for it on this guy, yeah, a lot of fun. It says TV Pablo. Looks like the vehicle. It's not the vehicle, but it looks like it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this one. Uh, let's do Studio Series. Uh, so from what I remember... There is a little bit of order operations you have to do. I think you have to save the legs for last. Because it took me a while to figure this guy out. Because it is not fun. So these pieces are on clips. Right there you can see. And it's a nice clear plastic clip. So hooray for that. I hope it doesn't break. That piece is on a clip. <laughs> and that piece comes off with the absolute tiniest bit of effort. Uh, that just completely just comes off. Because hey look. See that? Clear plastic. Hooray! And you can see just how thin that is. But you can see right there, this piece. It has like a guard. And you're supposed to get this clear plastic. Like, you, did you hear that? You kind of see that little stress right there. It's kind of hard to see. But that little de uh, deformation right there. See that shining? That's where this clear plastic has to strain past that tab to go in. Like, this thing's going to freaking break, I swear. It's gonna break. <laughs> why are you? Why are we stressing clear plastic, Hasbro, for a transformation? Are you? Are you stupid? <laughs> why is? Why is that part of the transformation on this guy? We do need to rotate his head, otherwise we're just gonna see his face going out of the windshield. Uh, this part. I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, this all this all rotates. That's important. Uh, because uh, the arms. Even though the hinge can move up, the arms move down, I believe. So, they're going to get the arms moved down. Why are we not moving more? I feel like we should be moving more. Like, I don't know. I know people get upset with me because I'm not, like, following the instructions. But Transformers, you should be able to do without the instructions. You should be able to learn it. You should be able to just follow it and figure it out on your own. But this guy, I'm just... There's so many pieces where I feel like I'm flexing plastic over plastic, and I'm not having a good time. Like, it's it's just not feeling good. And look at this right here. Look at how these doors are, like, so wedged. Look at that wedge. And that wedge essentially remains there until you manage to get those clipped in. But even then, it's still going to be there as long as the arms are not straight. And that is just so stressful for me. Because the arms only straighten once everything else here straightens. And it's just a mess of all these panels. Like, look, you have to work that panel past that panel. And then get that tabbed in. I think I got that side. And then let's get the front thing. If that clips off again, I swear. Thank goodness not. So that's the front. We got the front. Hooray. We got that done and taken care of. Uh, <laughs> and then this is where it gets a little bit easier, but God, it's just so tight and there's so many panels and it's just not fun, man. That part is just not fun. This is where that rotation comes in. 
that weird like thigh rotation because you need that for the transformation. You put the heel in and the feet just kind of collapse inside. So that's kind of interesting. We don't really see a lot of transformers do that lately. Uh, but we will get it done pretty soon. Pretty soon we'll get it done. I do appreciate how like that tabs in and kind of keeps the legs very nice and neat with the rest of the vehicle. Because sometimes with transformers, like you transform the legs and they almost feel separate. Like the legs are the legs are often very independent from the rest of the transformation. But I do like when there is like a connection with them where it'll connect to the rest. And we can see we're kind of struggling to get that panel fully lined up. And we have these panels that will on again very tight hinges go up and tab and close. And there is this alt mode for the Studio Series wheel jack. Bit of a stress, bit of a stressful experience, especially up front here. This is very stressful and it's a lot of clear plastic. But we can see it is a far more accurate vehicle mode. Uh, it's definitely like a Volkswagen camper. I do appreciate the silver lining on it. I think that does make it look a lot better and it does have a more proper backside instead of just kneecaps. Uh, again, you know, it just seems more movie accurate, more faithful. It is a little smaller, I do have to say. It's a little smaller. But overall, definitely the vehicle mode goes to the Studio Series. Transformation I'm going to give to the main line. But for the robot mode, man, I don't know. Both of them are pretty jank. Both of them have pretty jank robot modes. And that's on top of the already very controversial design. So... When it comes to Wheeljack from Rise of the Beast, I don't know, man. Take your pick. I if if you want the character, go ahead. But in either line, he is not a highlight. That is for sure. So with that being said, there we go. There is another round of Studio Series mainline said and done. Uh, I don't know, man. Studio Series for Rise of the Beast is very hit or miss. It has some amazing figures, and then it has figures like Mirage. And these that are just kind of like, meh, they're all right. The, these are nothing to write home about. I'm not very ex excited about either of them. They're, they are what they are. If you want yourself a Scorponok, here you go. If you want yourself a Wheeljack, here you go. They're probably like some of the most just okay Transformers I've gotten in a long time. One interesting thing, though, when I got this at Target, it only rang up 20 bucks, which was pretty nice. Uh, unfortunately, Wheeljack did not. He was 25 at Walmart, but that's just how it is. And one thing I want to show in case you're curious about like how this Wheeljack mode scales with RC. If you want RC kind of looking like she's, you know, dangling on it. Really doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't scale at all. RC should be like half the size. Like, why would a motorcycle wheel be so much bigger than a camper wheel? <laughs> But it's whatever. It's it's an option. You you can do it. All right, there we go. Yeah, this this is this. That's pretty much these figures in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Special shout out to channel members as always. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Have a great one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.